Our next presenter is no stranger to this stage. He is an excellent communicator and full of lots and lots of energy. Ian Lee is a local entrepreneur, co-founder of Lee Spirits Company at Colorado Springs, actually our first gin distillery, craft gin distillery. He, um, Ian is also a board member for Peak Startup, a nonprofit focused on fostering entrepreneurship in the Pikes Peak region. He recently opened Brooklyn's on Boulder Street. How many of you guys have been there? It is incredible if you haven't been there. It's, you know, Ian is a business neighbor of mine, and Brooklyn's on Boulder is, is a prohibition-style speakeasy. The attention to detail is, is phenomenal, and it's, it's a wonderful place. So you should go. Um, so yeah, let's welcome Ian to the stage as he shares with us. Thanks, Steve. Hi, my name is Ian Lee, and I am, in fact, the co-founder of Lee Spirits Company, a craft gin distillery here in Colorado Springs. And today I'm going to talk to you about the future of cocktails and tell you a little bit of history as well. And we're going to do that with three specific topics. The first one is we're going to talk about alcohol and where it came from and the creation of it. Then I'm going to tell you short stories about cocktails themselves because they're amazing. And then finally, I'm going to give you some of my personal thoughts about where the future is and where the future lies for cocktails themselves. Now, listen. The problem is, is that every single time you hear a story about a cocktail or the history of gin, it's just about as colorful as the individual that's telling you that story. So I want to let you know that these are all the sources that I've cited during this presentation. So if you want to know any information about it, we can talk about it later. But it doesn't really matter because they're really, really old and you should just totally believe me. So let's talk about the history of alcohol. Started in about 4,000 BC. That's when our historians found our first like evidence about the fact that people were using distillation. In about 400 BC, Aristotle um, wrote down in a history book somewhere that you could take salt water, run it through a still, and get out normal water, and then you could drink it, which is pretty cool. In 980, some Arab in Saudi Arabia decided to put uh, alcohol inside of it, and then booze came out, and it was really fantastic. And by 1100 AD, trade throughout the world was spreading distillation to every corner of it. Now, this is the very first age of cocktails. It happens to be the first age, and alcohol was actually called spirits then because it did things to your body that people didn't really understand scientifically, and they thought it came from heaven, which is kind of cool, but you need to understand <laughs> that it was being only used for medicinal purposes. So then we move into the archaic age, which is when we were making primordial cocktails. People were accidentally leaving apples in barrels, and it would freeze over the winter and then ferment, but alcohol doesn't freeze, so it would all rise to the top, and all of a sudden there was a bunch of apple cider in this barrel, and it was super awesome, and you'd call your friends over to to drink it with you. So then we get to the golden age of cocktails, which is the greatest era that has existed since now for cocktails itself. And it's broken into two parts. And the first one is called the, oh, I see I'm talking a little bit fast. That's fine. The Baroque age. And during the Baroque age, we find that people were taking tools and techniques and gentlemen like Jerry Thomas became a bartender. Now, that's only really important because this is the very first time in history where this was an entire job. Like, people literally did this forever. And he made 23 cocktail styles and wrote it in a book. And during the classic age, during the golden age of cocktails, this was repeated over and over and over again. Thousands of cocktails were written down. And America becomes the leading source for handcrafted libations. Bartending was a career. And then, bam, prohibition happens. So what happened? We all went underground and started drinking booze in the places that we really shouldn't have been. And that's really okay, so we don't really talk about the dark ages all that much because, you know, nothing really happened. There was no alcohol anywhere, and it wasn't really like a big deal. <laughs> but really what was happening was the deco age was occurring, okay? We couldn't make alcohol in the United States, so we were importing it. And that's important to understand because that's when the Caribbean and Canada and Western Europe were influencing the way that we were drinking here in the United States. So you hear about the tiki drinks and using lots of sugar and all that kind of stuff. But then World War II occurs, and we move into the industrial food age for cocktails, where the manufacturing of products is taking over and replacing our desire to have fresh products. Okay? And that completely changes the way that we drink. And as we move into the second dark age between 1966 and about 1990, the marketing moguls took over and were pushing cheap. They were pushing simplicity, and they were pushing manufacturing, right? And that led to us consuming crap as far as cocktails are concerned. But somewhere at the turn of the early 90s, we have really big box commercial restaurants like TJIF Fridays that understood that bartending used to be a really entertaining thing. And so they started bringing back the art of the bartender, and we see a lot of places in the Renaissance in entertaining people with cocktails. And now we are in the platinum age, from 2010 to where we are right now. 88% of consumers are currently experiencing cocktails as a luxury item. 
consumers are desiring value and experience now with their cocktails. So what does that mean for the future? Well, I have a few things to tell you guys about, and I thank you so much for listening to my history of cocktails. But we're not done, because the future is only going to be greater. <coughs> so what's going to happen? Well, first of all, fresh is now the new standard as far as cocktails are concerned. And you need to understand that that is actually leading and driving everything. Bitter is not is in and not sweet. So sorry if you love the apple teeny, but sugar is on its way out. High fructose corn syrup sucks. You should be not drinking that stuff, all right? <laughs> What's really occurring, though, is that culinary institutions that we re regard as really high-end restaurants are driving and influencing the way that we look at cocktails. We are seeing them now as food, and we are not seeing them as a way to get crunk, which is cool, but, you know, let's be real, right? What's old is actually the new, new, right? So it's cool to go back in time and do history and come up and dig up things that used to be relevant in the past and consume them again. And listen, vodka is out. The new white spirit is gin because there's flavor in it and you can actually make really dynamic cocktails. So I look forward to sharing with you more about the future of cocktails. Thank you.